know about the different divisions of forensic science laboratory, learn different tools and techniques of forensic science laboratory. Forensic science can help to prove the guilt or innocence of the defendant in civil actions. Forensic science can also help to resolve a broad spectrum of legal issues through the identification, analysis and evaluation of physical evidences. Edmund Lockhart was the first French criminalist who have started, who have established the first forensic science laboratory in France, Lyon in 1910. He also contributed significantly in giving uh, principles of forensic science. All the forensic science laboratories, whether central or state, which were earlier working under the police departments, presently has been brought under the direct control of Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India. The position of forensic science laboratory in an overall organization structure has been thoroughly documented and legally defined. In order to respond to the rising demand of forensic support in crime investigation process, the more and more laboratories are required and, uh, and has been established presently. Its organization and structure depends on to some extent on the nature of the legal system and also on the history of development of forensic science in that particular country. The role of the labs is to provide scientific aids to investigate, to investigating officer and help in the recognition, collection and packing of the evidences properly at the scene of crime itself. Sometimes its role is to perform research in the field of forensic and continuously update the techniques and the methodologies used for analysis of physical evidences. And finally, to improve the quality of the lab services provided to the criminal justice system and elaborative efforts are required to be made and to deliver the goods to the criminal justice system. Now, let us try to understand the module with the help of visuals and graphics. You know, it is duty of the lab to clearly define and document the kind and extent of forensic science services it is going to provide. Managing authorities of such lab must ensure that the lab is not and will not engage in any activity that might decline the faith in its competence, impartiality, judgment or operational integrity and that the lab personals are not under any type of commercial, financial or any other pressure that might skeptically affect the quality of their work. Now let us talk about various divisions of forensic science lab. Number one, photography, which is common for all the divisions. Number two, instrumental analysis. This division is also common for all the other divisions. Number three, biological sciences, which includes biology unit, serology unit, DNA unit. Number four, physical sciences, which include physics unit, ballistic unit. Number five, chemical sciences, which include chemistry unit, toxicology unit, narcotics unit, explosive unit. Number six, document division. Number seven, fingerprint division. Number eight, psychological division that has light detection including brain fingerprinting and narco analysis number nine voice identification number ten computer forensic and cyber crime division number eleven field units or mobile labs all the forensic science labs are headed by a director who has undergone scientific training and has many years of experience. 
In comparatively bigger labs, the director is assisted by additional or joint director and the administrative officer. All the divisions are generally headed by deputy directors and having research experience of several years in various aspects of forensic science. The head of the division is assisted by assistant director, senior and junior scientific officers. Senior and junior scientific assistants, lab assistants and attendants. Overall, hierarchy of the lab goes something like this. At the top comes director, then after director comes joint director or additional director under whom is scientific cadre for each unit whether biological, chemical, physical, instrumental, document or photography unit it will comprise of a deputy director, assistant director, senior scientific officer, junior scientific officer, senior scientific assistant, scientific assistant, lab assistant and the last one would be lab attendant. Now talking of non-technical staff, they carries out clerical work, maintenance of store, supplies and maintenance duties. The lab must be secure and it should be properly guarded against theft and loss of crime exhibits. There should be adequate storage space for incoming and outgoing case exhibits and should be kept in a separate storage room. Each police district should be given a separate storage rack so that the exhibits do not get misplaced or intermixed. The storekeeper handles only sealed packets of the exhibits. Some of the centralized divisions and type of facilities they provide to other divisions are discussed below. Number one comes library. It is one of the most important parts of the forensic science lab. Besides having good subscriptions of national and international research journals, the library should have a rich collection of the scientific both related to natural science as well as forensic science books. Forensic science literature has been on the increase during to the past few years, so library must be well equipped with the internet facilities and well connected with other libraries of the world to keep their knowledge updated. In addition to the above facilities, the reference works in chemistry, physics, biology, biotechnology and other disciplines should also be included in the library. Next would be Forensic Museum. A well-equipped museum should be established which should have medical legal models, different types of firearms, classical and modern, cartridge cases, bullets, poisonous snakes, plants, chemicals and rare poisons, useful charts on the different aspects of forensic science should also be displayed. Depending upon the analytical needs or requirements of the investigation, the case exhibits are examined in one or more divisions of the lab. Next is Instrumental Analysis Division. The well-equipped centralized facilities should be available at every lab to examine the sample of various divisions by using modern instrumental methods of analysis as requirement. In the present day world, the lab should have at least latest sophisticated instruments like HPTLC, GCMS, 
LCMS, SIM, HPLC, FTIR, Atomic Absorption Spectrophotometer and others like Neutron Activation Analysis. Then comes Photography Division. This is one of the most important centralized division of any forensic science lab which plays an important role in preserving, presenting, understanding and the authentication of result of various divisions of the lab to be presented before the court of law. Now let us discuss about various tools and techniques. Some of the important tools and techniques which are usually employed in the above set two categories of the division to analyze evidences must have the following characteristics. The tools should be sensitive, specific, result obtained should be repeatable from the tools and some of the tools and techniques commonly used in forensic science labs are as follows. Number one, visual examination. Now visual examination of the evidence usually involve macro photography. This is then usually followed by microscopic analysis of which a number of different types are available depending on the type of material to be analyzed such as stereo microscope, scanning electron microscope or comparison microscope. SEM is especially useful because extra analysis can be conducted on selected areas of the sample. So is a form of microanalysis. Useful where chemical residues can show unusual elements present which may indicate chemical attack of the product. Now various chemical color tests are applied on the evidences ultraviolet, infrared and visible light examination is also done. Chromatography, TLC, HPLC, HPTLC, column chromatography, spectroscopy, atomic absorption and emission, spectrometry, spectrophotometry, compound microscope, scanning electron microscope, blood group testing techniques example absorption inhibition, absorption illusion and mixed agglutination, enzyme types with single and multi-system electrophoresis, electrophoresis, DNA analysis, XRF, XRD, metallurgy, autoradiography, GS mass spectrometry, nuclear magnetic resonance, nuclear activation analysis, physical measurements example weight, volume, length, density, refractive index, X-ray analysis and radio immunoassay are some of the methods used for examination of evidences. Now forensic science lab analysis work involves the examination of a wide variety of items and substances which are further used as evidences. The following list defines the types of evidence that may be received in various divisions of forensic science labs for conduct of examination and framing of opinion in the form of report. Let us first discuss about biology division. In biology division identification of evidence that comes for examination are blood, teeth, hair, body fluids and tissues of human and animals. Plant materials including pollen, diatom and phytoplanktons aging and sexing from skull and other bones are done in biology division. In cases of wildlife offenses, skin, hair, bones, feathers, 
horns etc are commonly found as an evidence in serology division following items are sent as an evidence number 1 hair blood body fluids and tissues for dna profiling blood teeth hair body fluids and tissues of human and animals plant materials are brought in now let us talk about chemical sciences number 1 would be controlled substances for example controlled pharmaceutical and illicit drug and related chemicals or paraphernalia are brought in in toxicology division evidences that are sent for examination are pharmaceutical products poisons alcohol and human viscera whereas in criminalistics for instance trace evidences like fire debris pyrotechnic devices glass paint metals and alloys fibers and hairs adhesives oils and greases lacrimatory chemicals fertilizers acids food feeding stuffs and ancillary items building material component of technical or household appliances botanical material excluding controlled substances hydrocarbon fuels light filaments vehicle component firearm discharge residues clothing garments dyes and pigments cosmetics types of soils corrosive materials alkalis lubricants and spermaticial agents electrical devices and components manufacturer mark and restoration of serial number are done explosives and explosion debris are also sent to it then comes ballistic department where firearms bullets and cartridges are sent for examination along with it is question document examination department where subjects that has to be examined are handwriting and document paper rubber stamps security marks printers and other printed objects inks and printing materials copier and copied material indentations typewriters and typewritten material embossing and embossed materials fingerprints palm prints etc other marks and impressions that are sent for analysis are shoe prints glove marks tool marks and impressions tire prints fabric prints non friction rich body prints for audio video and computer analysis audio tape recordings language samples image enhancement facial mapping speech samples computers including hardware and software video grammatically recovery of information and in case of accident investigation tachograph charts component failures speed calculations from skid marks trace evidence electrical failures are used for analysis lab accreditation activities are administered as directed by the board of national accreditation board for testing and calibration laboratories now let us have a look on the guidelines and instructions for submission of cases to the cfsl the procedure to be followed and care to be taken while forwarding cases 
to the CFSL for examination and opinion have been elaborated in this section. The cases should be submitted for the examination and opinion of the CFSL by filling up the forwarding memo, clear specimen seal impressions on sealing wax and its ink impression separately must accompany this form for comparison with the seal impression on the exhibit or parcel. The exhibits duly described, packed, marked and sealed should accompany this memo. Cases exhibits should be sent through an authorized messenger and should be similarly collected on receipt of information from the CFSL along with the report of the CFSL. Now specific guidelines by the various divisions with respect to exhibits are number one biology division point one all stains caused by blood fluid should be dried in air and shade each stained area should be covered by clean paper and then packed each article should be packed separately Point number two, vaginal or cervical and anal swabs collected during medical examination should be dried immediately and then sent in a glass tube promptly to the lab. Point three, vomit and fecal stains should be sent after drying and should be suitably packed. Point four. Tissue samples may be preserved in 10% formalin and sent to the lab if serological examination is also required. That is, origin and grouping, the tissue sample should be preserved in 0.85% of saline water. Point 5. If there are hair sample on the victim or accused, or on a weapon, sample hair of the victim as well as from the suspect should be sent separately in sufficient quantities. Hair may be pulled out to get a random sample. If this is not feasible, a considerable number of hair should be collected by cutting them close to the skin and they should be packed and labeled accordingly. If no other suitable method is practicable for the collection of hair, the method of combing may be adopted. Number six, bones collected should be sent as such after drying and the same should be packed carefully without fracturing. Number seven, the stain or tissue etc. should never be touched directly with fingers as the sweat and skin may contaminate the stains. Sterilized tweezers may be used for handling it. Next is serology division. A piece of cloth stained with a few ml of post-mortem blood should be dried thoroughly and should be packed in a clean paper envelope. Liquid blood when kept at room temperature for a long period would disintegrate and become useless for scientific examination. Airtight, unsterile bottles and plastic bags be avoided in sexual offense cases where ABO grouping of semen, saliva stain is required for comparison. Number two, whenever stains are forwarded, the control materials cloths must be sent separately. Number three, blood and saliva sample one to two ml of both the suspect and the victim packed in ice boxes may be rushed immediately to the CFSL to avoid putrefaction. Number four, all the stains caused by blood semen or other body fluids should be preserved well by drying in air and packed properly. 
Number five, different individual blood, semen or other body fluids should be packed separately. Now let us talk about precautions that has been laid down by physics division. Number one, for examination of paint on vehicles, the paint smear on a vehicle and the paint flakes from the scene of crime should be collected separately. Control sample of paint from each vehicle under examination should be collected separately and marked. Assistance from the experts should be taken for collecting samples if necessary. Number two, soil or mud on a victim's cloth or on shoes should be preserved carefully. Disputed and controlled samples should be packed and marked separately. Number three, to ascertain the direction of force in case of broken window panes, remnant of the glass pieces of window panes which remains intact in the window frame should be marked indicating inside and outside of the room. These be packed carefully to avoid any breakage. Number four, tool marks on articles, cut ends on wire should be covered with cotton and then packed in airtight containers to avoid further damage. Number five, in case of examination of copper and telegraph wires, the cushion samples should be at least one meter in length. Number six, guidelines as per Annexure 27B should be followed for recording conversations required for comparison or recognition of voice. Number four, ballistic division. Point one, arms, their components and ammunition when seized from a scene of crime or a suspect or from elsewhere should be packed and sealed separately. Number two, clothes of the deceased injured having bullet marks should be sent to the laboratory. The powder marks around the bullet holes should be preserved by covering them and stapling around with a piece of clean polythene sheet. Number three, a firearm should be unloaded before forwarding to the lab before unloading the number, position and orientation of the live, misfired and fired cartridges cases in the chamber and magazine of the weapon should be carefully observed and forwarded to the lab. Number four, position of all exhibits, bullets and brackets marked at the scene of crime should be noted, measured, photographed and forwarded to the lab. Similar guidelines should be allowed in case of explosives as well. Point five, fired bullets, cartridge cases and the weapons used in crime should be sent as such. Effort should not be made to clean them. The bullets or cartridge cases should be wrapped in a cotton wool and packed in containers to ensure that the microscopic marks appearing on them are not disturbed, destroyed during the transit. Point six, the service of a ballistic expert should be requisition for scientific evaluation of an undisturbed crime scene and post-mortem examination in important cases. Point seven, copy of the post-mortem report injury sheet should be sent in case of death or injury by firearm. Point eight, only diffused explosive, explosive devices are examined. The diffused device and a small representative sample that is 10 gram of the live chemical explosive should be sent to the lab through a messenger. Number nine, live detonators should be wrapped in cotton wool and then packed in paper cartons separately and labeled to avoid accidents during transit. Chemical explosives, hand grenades, dynamite cartridges should be sent separately. 
then comes documents division the following precautions should be observed while handling documents keep documents unfolded in protective envelopes number 2 if storage is necessary keep the documents in dry place away from excessive heat and strong light number 3 do not mutilate or damage by repeated refolding creasing cutting tearing or punching for filing purposes number 4 documents should not be subjected to frequent or careless handling and should from the very beginning be properly protected either by placing them between sheets of blank paper or preferably between thin transparent sheets of celluloids number 5 document requiring development of chance prints should be protected in transparent celluloid envelopes number 6 chemistry division point 1 the investigating officer should furnish the history of a case to enable the cfsl expert to arrive at a correct interpretation in poisoning unnatural death cases the investigating officers should ensure that the medical officer uses suitable preservatives while forwarding the exhibits keeping in view the history of poisoning case number 2 arrangements should be made to deposit the samples as quickly as possible in the lab number 3 a legible post mortem report mentioning the nature of the suspected poisoning on the basis of symptoms should invariably accompany the exhibits point 4 in case of suspected poisoning where the suspect had subsequently been undergoing medical treatment the prescription and nature of treatment should also be provided number 5 the io visiting the scene of crime in a poisoning case is advised to take into positions the remnant of food drinks bottles utensils and wrappers vomit blood from the scene should be swapped with cotton packed in polythene bag and forwarded to lab now let us summarize what we have learned in this module the major aim of forensic science laboratory is to contribute scientific assistance to the agencies involved in criminal investigation and the second is to examine the crime related exhibit referred by police judiciary and other government agencies to give opinion the third one is that to provide scientific aids to investigating officers in scientific investigation of crime finally that to provide knowledge and training to the police personnel judicial officer and other related officers